Making games is already very hard, and marketing games is just S tier. That's why in this video, we're talking with game marketing expert Chris Zukowski, covering four topics that are sure to help you in your Steam game marketing efforts. Let's do it. What's the one piece of critical advice for an indie dev looking to market their game? It's a marathon. It's not going to be last minute. I say get your Steam page up nice and early and just start trying out some platforms to see if they work. See if you can do, if you've got a TikTok friendly game, see if you have a Twitter friendly game, see if you have this, because there's certain games that do well on these different platforms. Pretty much TikTok and Twitter are your only social media wor that works. Instagram just doesn't work. Reddit works too. So try them out. See if you've got a game that kind of hits that interest and then whatever it is, double down on that one and just learn the deep deep algorithms for that one if you've got a visually impressive game like 3d beautiful effects beautiful animations or some unique art style like it's painted i just saw that game that's made out of like cross stitch art embroidery on twitter yeah yeah, you, those type of games that are immediately visually amazing do well on TikTok, Twitter. Games that are like 3D, dark, grimy looking cool games do better on Reddit. Once mm. you find that, you do good. Now, if you have none of those, you basically have to go with a demo. There are games like Domekeeper we just talked about. That, that game's good looking. It's a good looking game, but it's not like the visuals are so revolutionary that you're like, oh my God, what is this game? Like yeah. if you show a screenshot, people are like, oh, okay, it looks like a typical pixel art indie game. But mm. when you played it, you were like the gameplay loops and everything were perfect perfectly tuned it was so perfect it's you didn't realize it was an amazing game until you played it so if you don't have a visual game put out a demo as soon as you can and start reaching out to streamers and let people just play the game and then they're like oh my god this game's so fun they'll recommend mm. it to the friends and streamers will recommend it to their audience figure out whether you're a game that's fun to look at or fun to play some are both but then double down on that one thing my friend and YouTuber extraordinaire and uh, how to make a video game all by yourself reader, uh, Thomas Stewart has a great question. Are there any modest strategies for devs to earn a decent living? And we're talking like 10K, maybe up to 100K most uh, for just like solid, reliable games on Steam. Is that a thing yes. at all? <laughs> yeah, and here's kind of the formula. Okay, stick to a genre that Steam likes, not platformers. Steam does not like pixel mm. art platformers. I'm sorry if you're making a pixel art platformer, but stick to genres that Steam likes, and then slowly release more and more games. Now, in the beginning, you're not gonna do very well. You're probably your first game's gonna earn that 10,000 you were talking about, but keeping by keeping the same genre, you're gonna reuse code. And so you wanna release your games frequently. Like I, I always tell indie devs, keep it small, release like three games in your first year, very wow. small. And you gotta learn how to release fast release these small games over time and they kind of snowball and you start to build that audience off of that. Steam actually promotes games that have released more than games that are upcoming. And so what you're doing is you're using all their past games to market your new games and they're on these kind of tight niches and you just kind of release them over time. Now, some of you is gonna say, well, that's impossible. Look at somebody named Cozy <laughs> B Games. Uh, she is like so smart about this stuff. She releases management sim games, kind of wholesome sim management sim games. Mm -hmm. She started her career. She started like three games in the first year, then another one in six months, and then another one in six months. And now she's working on one that's like a horse game that's taken her like probably a year and a half to make. That's her longest game. She has released more games than some people release one game. They like spend all this time making one yeah. game. She's already doing such great work releasing all these small games. Highly underrated indie dev. Cozy B Games, check them out. Next up, we've kind of got that one clever trick that can increase traffic to your Steam page. The funny thing is though, it's recommended by Steam. Cool, right? Let's check it out. Translate just your Steam page. You can do that. Steam will know that you, there's some check boxes to say whether your game is translated or just your Steam page. And Steam will put up a warning that'll say like, this game's Steam page is translated, but not the game. Or the developer hasn't indicated that this game has been translated. Mm. You'll see this one. It'll be localized to whatever language that person is. Oh, great. And what you can do is you can see whether your game is getting a percentage of the market. So for instance, if it's a strategy game, you're probably gonna get a higher percentage of German players. German players just love strategy games. Mm. So you can look and see like, whoa, when we translate our page, we got so many wish lists from Germany. You can actually go in through Steamworks. It's very complicated. I, I think search my blog for it. I think I tell how to do it, how to find out what the percentage of wish lists are coming from. You can see whether there's an outsized interest in your game from that region. Sometimes I find the Korean and Chinese streamers have a big effect on the market. So if some Korean or Chinese streamer plays your demo or your game, they can really boost their their the wish list from that. They they, they take a huge signal. Uh, gamers from those two countries really take a huge interest from their streamers. You'll see stuff where you're like, why am I getting all these wish lists? And then search Bibby Bibby 
Billy Billy, I think, what, whatever the <laughs> Chinese YouTube is, you typically got covered by a Chinese streamer. That's usually what happens. So I recommend, and Steam, I, I just mirror what Valve tells us, is translate Chinese, Korean, and Japanese first because those uh, players don't typically read English. Whereas most European players are mm. willing to translate into or willing to, you know, they can usually read English uh, for this stuff. So they're they're more flexible about that. But if you've got a limited, limited budget, translate your Steam page to those Asian languages first and then see what happens. The other thing is I've mentioned those two widgets, popular, upcoming and new and trending. Those are localized based on the regions that are translated. If you don't translate your page, your game will not show up in popular, upcoming and new and trending. So at least before you launch your game or get close to that launch period, which is like two to three weeks before you launch, make sure you have all the translations up because those localized pages, those those ranking charts are localized. So you want to get in those because those are huge boosts to visibility, huge boosts. And if you're not translated, you don't even show up in that. So you, even if you're making a strategy game for the German market and that you didn't translate to German, you're not going to show up in the popular upcoming German page. So you got to do it. Translate your pages. See if it, you're getting interest from people from the, yeah. from those countries. And if you are, then consider allocating budget or doing something for it or even messaging to your team, to your, to your public and saying, hey, we're not doing German yet, but it's going to be there on May 30th, mm. you know, 2024 or whatever, you know. Stay tuned. Yeah. Lastly, I asked Chris about interest first game development, which is a method that reduces risk. It's something my friend and Fruit Ninja designer Luke Muscat and I talked about on a recent episode of Make the Game. Luke has been using YouTube devlogs to vet his games before fully committing to them. A super smart strategy. Let's see what Chris has to say. Is this a good strategy? You you pay the money, you get the Steam page up, and then you see how it does, right? And maybe you do that two or three times, and then you chase after the one. Because like, like 100 bucks per page, plus like you got to put together at least enough tech to, to make the screenshots happen, to make the trailer. Like it doesn't have to be a playable game. It can be, it doesn't even have to be a video game. It can just be something that shows pixels moving on a screen, right? But like that seemed like a lot of effort, but you know, maybe it's worthwhile because we're going to be spending months or years in our game. Like we want to know for sure if it has something there, right? Like, is, is that the way to do it? You spend that initial investment of time and money before going further? In theory, yes. I, mm. I love that. However, specifically with Valve and Steam, don't do that because um, actually this this company from Poland called Playway, they actually got in trouble from Steam for doing this thing where they put up these fake games. They would just spend it and they saw which games got the most wish list, and then they would just delete the page or cancel it and just do the other ones. And Steam caught on to them because they were doing so many. Mm. I don't know what that limit is. Like, oh, if you do three, it's okay. But if you do 10, that's a problem. You want to be on the good side of Steam, especially for indies. Mm. But I like that idea of just gauging whether there's interest first. For all these marketing things that we talk about, that is the number one thing. It is your game. That is the center thing. We're not brainwashing people when we market a game. They have to like the game first. It's just we're finding the audience. That's how marketing is. And if nobody wants the game, nobody thinks it's a cool looking game or it's an interesting concept, it doesn't matter. It has mm. to have that magic where you like, oh, it's a game where you're a squirrel with a gun. And everybody's like, I got to see that. That is magic. And so what you should do, and here's an alternative, and this is actually what Domekeeper did. They just did a bunch of game jams, Itch. They uploaded it to Itch, and they just looked. They did it like once a month. They'd put up a game that they did a game jam on, and they just saw there was one game of theirs that got like four times the traffic of the other one because right. it was fully playable. And and people were like, hey, uh, can you make some more levels for this game? Like People were just out of the blue emailing them. That is a good sign. That is a good sign. Yeah. I don't have the answers. People come to me and they're like, Chris, this is a good idea for a game. I don't know. <laughs> I literally do not know. Nobody knows. You just have to put it out there and see what the, the public likes. And I think itch might be a good way. And normally itch, if you try and sell a game, you're not going to sell anything. Mm. But if you upload a free version of a of a game to itch, that's actually a pretty good thing. Um, Peglin also did the same thing. They yeah. uploaded a bunch of like, game jam games and peglin was on there and people kept emailing the guy about peglin and he was like i think i should make this game they keep asking if there's going to be upgrades to this game <laughs> i'm like maybe that's a sign so what my recommendation is if you're there and you're like is this a good idea for a game just make it make a small mm -hmm. game jam version takes you a month maybe to make upload that itch. to itch and you won't know if chris is like how many downloads do i get I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> do it four or five times and whichever one gets the most you're going to see if you've got it one is going to go like Mm. so much more like an order of magnitude and then you're going to get feedback from people there's no system to game people just be like hey 
Are you making more for that game? I really liked it. That's a good sign. Have a listen to this full 45 minute game marketing conversation on the latest episode of Make the Game. You can listen on Valadria.com or all the usual places you'd expect like Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Ears and all that. It's a great conversation full of game marketing gold, so treat yourself. Also check out the Staying Inside Conference featuring talks from Chris and other game marketing experts. Save 10 bucks by using the coupon for the Inside Conference. At checkout, use the coupon code Make the game all one word lastly folks if you enjoyed this video you've got to let me know seriously this was a ton of work and i got a game to finish but if this is helpful to you and you want to see more like this then you know what to do like it subscribe and send the video to a friend post it in your discords or reddit help me help you oh yeah and pick up a copy of how to make a video game all by yourself you deserve it